Okay. Hello everyone, this is Moshe, the Electric Israeli. I just want to share with you this awesome video interview of Elon Musk by Marquez Brownlee. Uh, and the highlight of this video is the possibility of Tesla making a $25,000 electric car in three years. I, w I don't want to add anything. Watch the interview. It's really awesome. Enjoy. What's up guys, I'm KBHD here and just got back from sunny California where we spent some time with possibly the busiest man alive, Elon Musk. Uh, but he was super generous with his time and we did this sort of a sit down chat at the Tesla factory and then also did a sort of a factory tour which will be a separate video coming soon. But a ton of things we could have talked about since we were at Tesla at that time. Basically our topics ranged from talking about Tesla products to our love for Tesla to tech and the future all wrapped into one. So this is that chat. Thanks for watching. Enjoy. All right. First of all, thanks for uh, taking the time, sitting down I'm on your very busy schedule, I'm sure. Good to see you. Yeah, good to yeah, see you too. Welcome. Uh, this, is a, this is a really interesting place to be. We're kind of in like a bird's eye view of seeing a couple, couple different things happening behind us in the factory. These occasionally move, which is yeah. cool. Those are, those are empty door carriers. So like, they would have okay. carried the doors to cars to get assembled and then they're on their way back to pick up some more doors. Nice. So uh, I think most people know you as the boss, the face of Tesla, uh, the decision maker. For those who, just for some context, what is your, how do you spend time at Tesla? What do you do? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I think probably a lot of people don't realize I'm like basically just uh, in the factory in design or engineering meetings or production. Um, so that's like 80, 90 percent of the time. I think sometimes people think I spend a lot of time on Twitter. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what gave, why, why they would think that. Uh, that's crazy. Um, but uh, actually, it's like that's like almost nothing. Um, uh, most of uh, my time is spent, um, well, at least in the last several months, especially uh, going around the factory, um, and then working on say uh, the, the paint shop, the body shop where we weld up the body, um, the uh, uh, final assembly where we put all the parts together. Um, and and then if I'm not here, I'm either I'm at the Gigafactory in Nevada. Okay, so P100D owner, undefeated in stoplight races for Sweet. a while now. <laughs> uh, Rich over here in audio, hey. Model Three, pre uh, pre order, or okay. waiting for his, and Brandon behind the camera also waiting for Model Three. Okay, what what version are you waiting for? <laughs> Long range. Long range. Long range. Long range. Long range. And and what color? Uh, okay, that is a that is a good combo. I got blue uh, rear wheel drive. Nice. nice. Okay. Cool. So my question is, how, aside from making great products, how do you get people excited about Tesla? There's a lot of people I know and that I talk to who are just intrigued and interested and excited about Tesla as a company. The thing I really focus on at Tesla is, like, we really put all the money into and attention into trying to make the product as compelling as possible. So, because um, I think that really the way to um, sell any product is through word of mouth. So if, if one, somebody gets the car, they really like it, they, and, and actually the key is like to have a product that people will love. Yeah. Um, and, and generally people, that, um, you know, if they're at a party or touring friends or whatever, um, you'll talk about the things that you love. But you, you know, if you just like something, it's okay, you're not gonna care that much. But if you, you get love the reactions from the highs and the lows. Yeah, so you, you gotta make sure people it, really love you're gonna, it. It's, yeah. You're gonna talk, you know, and, and, and then that'll generate word, generate word of mouth. And that's basically how, how our sales have, have grown. Like we don't, we don't spend any money on advertising or endorsements or, uh, and um, so anyone like buys our car, they just bought it because they, they like the car. And you know, it's like, it's genuine. Um, and no discounts. Like I, I actually even pay full retail price for my own cars. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, and then we're really focused on trying to make the cars more affordable, which is re really tough. Like in order to make the cars affordable, you, you really um, you, you need high volume. So you need economies of scale. And because the other car companies make a lot more cars than we do, they got way better economies of scale. So as we're gradually able to build up um, and do do more cars, higher volume, then we can um, build them for progressively like less money, and then make um, make the cars available to wide, wide range of people. But it's super, I say like the car industry is like a super, this is like super competitive. It's like one of the, it's like insanely competitive. So uh, as far, I think I, like, I read a really interesting, or I think I heard it actually from an earnings call, but something interesting you said is 
one of the top five most frequent trade-ins for Model 3 is a Prius, right? Yeah. Uh, which okay. starts at, you know, 20 something thousand dollars, and they obviously have massive economies of scale. Do you think there's room, I mean, Tesla has Model 3, Model S, and Road stirring up. Is there room for possibly an even less expensive quality yeah. electric car experience? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I think in order for us to get to like let's say ultimately getting to like a, tw a twenty five thousand dollar car, um, uh, th that's uh, that's something we could we could do. But it's probably if we really work really hard, I think maybe we could do that in three years. Does Four it come years? with time and scale, or just yeah? It's a bit of, it's a bit of both. Yeah, because like the the key to making things affordable is is like designing is it's like design and technology improvements as well as scale. So if you think of like say um, phones, um, like the very earliest, like the earliest cell phones, like I don't know if you're, <laughs> uh, I'm probably like dating myself here, but uh, like the original Wall Street, uh, <laughs> where, where the guy's like walking down the beach and he's got like the it's like on a, like giant a, phone. He's carrying on like a briefcase kind <laughs> yeah. of thing. They're massive. Yeah. Like massive, massive phone. Yeah. And and like all it could do is phone. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, and like had like 30 minutes of battery life and that kind of thing. Um, now at that time. Uh, in the absence of technology improvements, like no amount of money, no amount of scale could have made that phone affordable. That would be a lot of engineering iterations, a lot of design iterations, um, and, and we're probably, I don't know, on the 30th version of, of, of a cell phone. Or, um, and, and, and with each successive design iteration, uh, you can add more capability, you can design, you can integrate more things, you figure out uh, better ways to produce it. Uh, so it actually gets better and cheaper, but it's like, it's, it's like a natural progression of any new technology that it, it takes multiple versions and a large volume in order to make it affordable. Gotcha. Is there anything in the near future of Tesla that you're really excited about? Yeah, there's a lot of things actually. <laughs> um, I mean, we're really, we're, like, we've got definitely way more product ideas than we uh, have resources to execute. We were just talking about this uh, with, with my team, uh, just like, hey guys, what, you know, what should we focus on? And now in the past, we've only done one car at a time. Um, and, but as, you know, as we go into the future, we've got to like basically figure out how to walk and chew gum. <laughs> so it's, like, it's like, okay, how do we do two products at the same time, but still have enough resources that both products are great? Right. Um, and so we're gonna, you know, gonna, we're gonna try to do you know, two products, um, one of them for sure is, is like the Model Y, you know, sort of compact SUV, um, comparable price point to the to the Model Three. Uh, then there's uh, the semi, the pickup truck, and the and the next gen Roadster. Yeah. Like, a next gen Roadster is kind of like dessert. We got to so talk about like, that. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's it's super exciting, mm -hmm. but it's like, and I think there's definitely some value to to doing it to show that an electric car can be faster than a gasoline car in every way. Yes. Uh, so I think there's like. You know, because it's still this sort of like a halo effect of 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 the gasoline sports cars. Because like in terms of top speed, they still have the best top speed. Yeah. Um, so that halo effect that I was gonna basically every metric possible seems like really ambitious. Like there's a lot of things that people people like me kind of accept that. Like I love my electric car, but I I know it's not gonna put down lap times 30 laps in just because there's yeah. So there restrictions. we go. Exactly. We got to work on that. Yeah. yeah. In okay. fact, I was, I, I was actually. Um, I was just talking to the team. I was like, uh, you know, I think we got some headroom there. Yeah. Um, oh, are we going to talk about track mode? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, because oh, I, I had okay, a, a very short experience with track mode with Model okay, 3. Okay. Yeah. So I love, so obviously Roadster is going to be, yeah, that, that Halo car. And if we're confident it's going to be an amazing car, I hope it's that car to beat, essentially. Y yeah. But then bringing track mode down to Model 3 brings that fun experience to a lot more people, that yeah, higher volume. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So 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 it's kind of like, um, you know, like uh, like we're like basically a bunch of nerds here. So um, <laughs> yeah. um, obviously <laughs> I don't want to give it away. Yeah. But like like the you know so we're tracking mode we want to like, uh, open up a lot of settings. Mm -hmm. So like you can adjust settings and it's kind of like an expert user mode, um, and and you can sort of um, adjust uh, traction control, uh, adjust like bat battery temperature. Um, uh, um, you know, break t like you can basically uh, configure a bunch of things, um, and it will tell you like, hey, you know, if you do this, it's a bit risky. Like you're gonna yeah. wear out your brakes a little sooner. Uh, it's like you might blow a circuit. You know, <laughs> like th like 
but like it'll be clear, like yeah. you know, uh, like it'll this let you is know. this is the risk that you're taking. Yeah, it's kind of like if if you have a, a graphics card and a computer, you can like go in there and you can change the settings and you can like overclock things. Yeah, um, and like okay, but you know. <laughs> so it's going to be all that will be in track mode, and you'll yeah. be able to see that and mess with it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it'd be cool, and you can like try different things and. Weird. Um, yeah, it'd be fun. Uh, a little more on Roadster, because I had a I made a video about it just after the event. I was sad I couldn't be there, but I'm a day one deposit because I was that excited. Okay. Uh, but I was wondering after you made that announcement, one, you said I think I quote plenty of space. What does that mean? Oh, you mean like like like. It won't be cramped inside. Like, like basically, um, if you're if you're a tall dude, you'll yeah. be able to sit in there. How tall are you? Six one and a half. Okay, so I feel like if you're comfortable in there, a lot of people will be. Yeah, and and then like my brother's six four. And so is he like, comfortable in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. And and, and Franz is like six three. I don't know. He's okay. pretty tall. And um, then my other question was uh, the side mirrors. This has been a theme in in the past with prototypes and cars that we've seen before they come out. They don't have yeah. mirrors. Regulatory, they have to have mirrors. Is there an advantage to Actually, not having mirrors, or is yeah, there yeah, yeah. is it just aerodynamic, or is there more to it? Now it's 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 actually surprisingly um, how how the mirrors, particularly at high speeds, can have um, quite a big effect on the drag of a car. They're like little air brakes, basically. Like typical car uh, side mirrors reduce a highway range by around five percent. Wow. Yeah, it's it's pretty intense. So you can see in a wind tunnel. Like you can see, you know, when you see like the sort of smoke trails in the wing tunnel, you can pockets. see just how much, yeah, they're yeah. like, they're just like air brakes. So to be aerodynamic, you actually want kind of like a teardrop uh, shape. So it's like, it's, it, it doesn't end in like a bluff. Right. Because it creates a low pressure zone behind the, the mirror. And so you'd have to like, have a kind of a, almost like a cone behind the, the mirror or, or, or blend it with the body or something like that. Okay. So it's like, they're actually surprisingly draggy. Um, now, a, a manufacturer is required to have side view mirrors, but I, I believe that a uh, the owner is not. Like you're, I, I think you're like, <laughs> okay. you, you can modify things, like at least in the US you can, if you, uh, the, the owner can modify things. The rule is about manufacturing, not it's driving. very much about, manufacturers are very tightly constrained. Okay. Um, and it's actually one of the things that makes it very hard to, to make um, a, a car that uh, l looks good and has a good performance and aerodynamics and everything, because it's like you got, you got all these constraints, and there's so many rules you need to follow. Um, so it, it's very challenging to make a car uh, look good. My other question about Roadster. Um, the specs are insane. They're ludicrous, some might say. Yeah. Uh, plat. So the plat, even. The, the only thing beyond ludicrous is plat. So, so <laughs> 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds. But more importantly, I was interested in is the 200 kilowatt hour battery yeah. and the 600 plus mile range. Is, are these numbers uh, assuming an improvement in available technology by 2020? Or are they something you can achieve now but don't have the manufacturing capacity to? Or is it somewhere in between? Yeah, so um, I think of it like basically uh, it's like two uh, Model S uh, P100 packs. Yeah. Uh, but, but you're really just doubling the, 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 in, the internals, the, the, se the cells inside. So there's like a lot of stuff that's related to the pack and the packaging and the safety and all that sort of stuff that um, is uh, not related to the cell. So you can double the, 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 the number of modules inside and at, at with, but it, it would still be like maybe an 80% increase in the volume of the, the packs. Like the floor would get four, four or five inches higher if, if, that, if it was current technology. So, but, um, but, but we would, we, we think we'll probably get um, another, Maybe 20 percent, 10 at least 10, maybe 20 percent improvement. Because we'll use like, like the thing about like an expensive car is we can use the the state of the art, the most advanced yeah. e equipment. Like it's kind of like with uh, with computers. Like they've come out with a new like graphics card or or, or CPU. It's like initially it's it's expensive, um, and so but then over time that that price drops down. And people like wonder is it like, do you have like automation? Do you have people? It's like we have both. Um, you know, it's just like a cyborg, but like integrated cyborg thing. Yeah. Actually, like one of the biggest constraints for us is is like being able to hire enough people. That was what I was going to ask. So yeah. like, and there's parking. a lot parking. of parking, man. Parking. <laughs> there's a lot of parking here. Yeah. If you have a lot of robots and a lot of people in the factory, what do people do that robots can't do? And obviously, there's a lot that robots can do as far as lifting and moving things. But as far as precision, maybe there's things they can do that humans can't do. 
you have a ratio off the top of your head, maybe, as far as people versus machines? Um, you know, it varies massively depending upon what part of the production process. Um, right. So, so some parts of it are like 80 to 90 percent automated, and then some parts of it are like uh, only 10 to 20 percent automated. What are those? What are those parts that humans do better than? Uh, hu humans are really good at adaptation um, and and rapid evolution and like doing like little like finicky things like like that. Um, like for general assembly, like one of the mistakes we made uh, that was like a pretty, pretty big mistake was trying to uh, automate uh, general assembly, which is where you put the parts together. You know, so like some of the things, it's like, like trying to connect uh, a hose that, that's like sort of dangling around. I see. And, and, and then you got like, the robot's like got to find the hose, grab it, like then connect it to another hose. At that point. It's like really hard. Yeah. For, like a person can just go, oh, they're done. Gotcha. Yeah. That uh, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And okay. it's like, when you see it, it's like, wow, it's super, super obvious. Um, and then we try to have robots do this, and it's like, robots like grabbing the wrong thing and like trying to stick it over here. And they're like, oh, the, the, the hose was here when the robot thought it was here. And yeah. so now it like tries to grab air and then like smashes into the car. <laughs> it's like, you don't want that. It, we, yeah, it was a comedy yeah. of errors, a uh, tragedy of errors. Like, first, you can say, like, this thing needs to connect to that thing. And, and then, however they, they arrive, person can figure it out. The yeah. robot would be... The robot would be like, ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. And then as far as uh, Tesla's overall master plan is what it was originally called. So you start with the low volume, high price Roadster. Then you move on Model S, higher volume, lower price, to Model 3. As far as I know, that's where the master plan ended. Yeah, that was like part one. Yeah. Part I mean, one. We had Model X in there, which, uh, uh, you know, was, was, that, that was, that was like, that was definitely an exercise in hubris. Uh, the, the, now the X is an amazing car, and it's like, um, but it's like we kind of got carried away with the art. I hear it's very we, difficult to make. Yeah, we, we got carried away with the, with the, the carried away with the art and technology. It's like it, it, obviously you want great art, you want great technology, uh, but we did get a little distracted from our mission, which is to like advance the cause of, of electric vehicles, um, and, and it probably delayed us a little bit with the Model 3 as well. So I guess my last question in here would be, just as far as the Tesla master plan, uh, part one, coming to an end, mm -hmm. is it now just a matter of steering the ship towards new opportunities? You see, there's not a lot of companies making a $35,000 electric car and a quarter million dollar supercar and a semi-truck and doing them all really well. Right. Do you guys see yourself just keeping a tight ship and picking your, your choices here and there? Yeah, that's why, we, we, um, what I was saying earlier, like we, it's, it's, a, it's a tough strategic call um, between focus and like being, wanting to do a bunch of different models. Like, we, 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 I think we, we, we want to try doing two at the same time. Um, like, so we've only ever done one at the same time before, do two, and then, and then um, if we get, get that if we're good with that, then we could just try doing three at a time. Like a lot of the other manufacturers, they'll do like you know twelve at a time. Yeah. You know? So if they're way bigger than us. Word. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck with it, and right. thanks for taking the time to sit down. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Cool. <laughs> Appreciate it.